So today we're going to take a look at this budget friendly server rack battery. That should be good. There we go. All right, so initial opening, got this little book here, another little book. So some information came with it, so that's good since it's refurbished, it still does have this information, the packing slip. And then I got the two bolts and covers for the terminals. And then you can see this is how it's covered. So it's packed pretty nice. Where this hole is right here, it looks like you can see that this took a little bit of damage in this foam, but hopefully it doesn't look like there's any damage on the battery itself. So that's a good thing. So we're gonna go ahead and I'll show you how it's packed inside. All right. So let's go ahead and take this out of the packaging. Here we go. Here's my big boy Cade. Look at this boy. Hey, big boy. <laughs> Hi. He has his own channel. He's Cade Connie Corso. All right. All right, watch out, bud. So as I was saying, you can see, here's a look at the four sides. And this is a refurbished battery. And it's from Echoworthy on eBay. So it's a lot more trustworthy than just a random source because it's from actual Echoworthy themselves. And let's see, we've got a little bit of information here on the top. Okay, and then it's got the data sheet and some tips and things here on the case. But basically, first impression, this looks basically brand new. So it's a refurbished battery. Don't know how much use it's had. It couldn't have that much use because it looks brand new. But they've obviously tested it and checked it to make sure it was still within what they considered a good battery to resell. More than likely, some of these are just returns, but there's no way of knowing for sure because you are getting a refurbished battery, but at least they ensure that it's a high quality. All right, so next I'm just gonna go ahead and check the voltage and I'm gonna see what voltage it's at upon receipt. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and check the voltage and one here. And there you see it's 52.7 volts. So upon receipt of this battery, it's at 52.7 volts. So this Echo Worthy refurbished 50 amp hour battery came with like new condition. You can see the information here, the data sheets right here on the metal case. It also came with this little cheat sheet, which you can see makes it easy. And of course you can get the same data online. You can just download and access this data that way as well. But you can see quickly and easily that this is a 51.2 volt battery, 50 amp hour, and the operation voltage is from 40 to 58.4 volts, and it can do a maximum continuous discharge of 50 amps and a charge of 50 amps with a 200 amp peak for up to 10 seconds. And then this part's important for me because this is outdoors in a plastic storage shed. It's my solar shed it can discharge at temperatures up to 55 degrees Celsius, which is 131 degrees Fahrenheit. I did do a video on how to keep that shed cool. You guys can feel free to take a look at that as well on my channel. Uh, but I expect I can keep the temperatures under that, but if it does go up over that just a little bit, I think we'll still be okay. High temperatures in general are bad for these batteries, but it's a cost-effective battery and I'm just gonna use it and get everything I can out of it until I'm in a scenario where I can make a different setup. You can see here that it shows at 60 degrees Celsius, which is a little bit higher than 131 degrees, you still get a capacity of 95%. So everything's looking good as far as that goes. 
Now it's time to go ahead and get this charged up so we can do a capacity test and see how well it works. All right, so the first thing I need to do is disconnect my old batteries. I'm just gonna go ahead and recycle these. These were sealed gel batteries and I've had them for almost three years now. So they're starting to really fail as far as capacity goes. They still charge and they still get a voltage, but they just don't have any capacity. And that's why I decided to make a change over to the battery that we're reviewing and installing now. So the first step is we're gonna go ahead and just shut down the system. And then I'm gonna take all these out. I'll bring the new battery in and I'll show you the right way to connect it and restart your system. And then we'll see what the voltage says it has on here versus our, our test meter. And I'll go ahead and set it up to charge. So for now, let's go ahead and get this disconnected. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn off the inverters themselves. And I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the solar. And then I'm gonna disconnect my batteries. My batteries are connected with T fuses and also circuit breakers. So I can just simply hit the circuit breaker and shut this off. So now I've disconnected the entire system from power. I can go ahead and disconnect my batteries. The first thing I'm gonna do when I disconnect these batteries is I'm gonna disconnect them from the actual system. So I'm gonna disconnect over here first. Disconnect my negative. All right. And I'm gonna disconnect my positive. All right, so now the entire system is disconnected and each one of these two 48 volt battery banks are disconnected from each other. So now I can go ahead and just disconnect all the rest. And we're gonna try to speed this along here. That's one set. And then the same thing for the other ones. All right, so now they're all disconnected. I started with removing the power from the system itself, and then I separated them all from each other. And now I can go ahead and move all these batteries out so I can bring the other one in. So each one of these batteries is just under 70 pounds, I think. So you can imagine I have eight batteries that are all just under 70 pounds because they're the sealed gel acid batteries. And I'm replacing them with one server rack lithium battery, which we'll take a look, but I think it was around 60 pounds just on its own. So definitely a substantial difference in weight and convenience and life cycle. Like I said, I've only had these a few years and the life cycle of these was far from impressive. All right, that's one set. All right, let's go ahead and get this out into the solar shed so we can work on getting it connected. So it's far easier to move this one battery instead of eight of those other ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect it now. So this can just come around right here like this. See, this keeps it more tucked along the wall so it's not just sticking out like it was and then same for this one i'm going to bring it in right there once i tighten these and we should be good tight you don't want to over tighten anything but you do want to make sure it's tight enough that it's got a good strong snug connection 
Feels good. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this one, which brings the system back on. That's good. And then for this last one, I'm not going to try to get a socket in there. I'm just going to go ahead and do a wrench. So let me go get a love 16 wrench real quick. I'll be right back. All right. So we're going to do this last one with the crescent wrench. That's a better fit. Tight. There we go. That works. All right. The first thing you want to do is you want to charge the capacitor in there. You charge the capacitor that way you don't send a flurry of energy that damages your system. It doesn't always happen where it will damage it, but it can. So one of the things that I'll do is we got the battery hooked up. We can double check red to red, black to black, negative, negative, positive, positive. Everything else is already in place. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this right here and I'll put a link in what these are, but I'm going to connect it. I just heard it come up and then I can turn it on. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to connect it. Heard it and turn it on. That's the safest way to turn your inverters on to make sure you don't cause too much energy flushing at once. All right, with those on, batteries are hooked up. Everything's good here. Let's take a look at what the voltage is. Okay, so first I'm gonna turn on the system. Okay. So battery's at 52.4, 52.5. Tomorrow I'm gonna to charge the battery all the way up. And once it is, then I'm gonna do a full discharge and we'll check capacity to see what we get. Okay, so I'm running the capacity test and there's a couple things I wanna go over as this capacity test is running. After charging the battery, its resting voltage was 53.1 volts. More than likely, one of the cells reached the over voltage protection and the charging was shut off. Over time, this will normalize, and I'm hoping that it will hold a little bit higher of a charge. But moving forward with that, you can see from the image here that it's currently at 51.4 volts during this part of the test. The load power is 1277 watts, which is a hot tub that I'm running for the test. And you can see the total discharging power of 1414 watts. I configured the settings to allow this battery to get really close to a full discharge. That way we can realize what the actual capacity is. And the system switched from battery power to grid power at an hour and 56 minutes and 20 seconds. I'll use an hour and 56 minutes for calculating the results. That equals 1.93 hours. I averaged out the wattage that I use to 1416 watts times 1.93 hours gave me a total of 2733 watts. 2733 watts divided by 51.2 volts equals a 53.37 amp hour battery. At 53.37 amp hours divided by 1.93 hours equals 27.66 amps is what I was pulling. At a 1C rate discharge, it would be 50 amps for one hour. My actual results show a 0.52 C rate on this test. All right, guys, and that's about it. So to recap this, it's been about three months. I haven't had any issues so far. It's been working great. Um, I think it was a good value for the money. I did get it renewed or refurbished from eBay, but even new on, you know, like Amazon or Echo Worthy Direct, they have these at a really good price. It's a really good budget battery. If you notice anything different I should do on this video, this is the first time I've done a capacity test and tried to crunch all the numbers, provide all that information. 
If the way that I evaluated or use those numbers needs to be adjusted a little bit, feel free to put it in the comments. Happy to address that on future videos. Let me know what you liked and didn't like about the video. And uh, hopefully you found this helpful on choosing a battery. This battery has been good to me so far. I, I want to in the future get some larger batteries and do some more tests, some more upgrades to the system. But for now, just to get myself up and running, this has been a great purchase at a great value. Hope you guys found this helpful and informative and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, don't forget, like and subscribe and see you next time.